Does that sound working, Robo Lawyer? I don't know. Anyway, we'll take a punt. We'll try it. Uh, we'll try it to this week. Oh, people say they can't hear you. Oh, oh, well, I can hear you, and that's the main thing, Robo Lawyer. In week eight, we look at the second of the lectures on family law, and this time we look at the, the topics of children and property. In fact, what's happened is the Family Law Act has been subject to many different amendments since it was first introduced in 1975. And some of it's been tweaking it, and some have been more substantial changes. Originally, it used to be the concept of custody and access. One parent got custody of the children, the other parent got access to the children. Well, in 1975, they changed that around, and they brought it with the or 1995 rather, I think I said 75, didn't I? It, the Family Law Reform Act changed that so that we had uh, changes to this idea of custody and access and they brought in the new concepts of parental responsibility, things like parenting plans, parenting orders, uh, specific issues orders. Now, the whole thing with this Family Law Act, the Robo Lawyer, you want to know why they keep changing it all the time? Well, that's because uh, attitudes, community attitudes keep changing and it's a topic which a lot of people are involved in because a lot of people have families, a lot of people have children and a lot of people, uh, unfortunately, uh, experience marriage breakdowns, relationship breakdowns. And the law was not really equipped to deal with the changing times and that's why they change these ideas about parenting and in fact it's come right through to last year the government brought in yet another amendment act it's called the shared parenting responsibility act and that came in last year in middle of last year and the result is that there's nothing in the textbooks about it. Uh, there, some people have written about the proposed bill so what we, I've been able to find out in the fam from the family law section of the Law Council of Australia and other uh, commentaries, the CCH commentaries, everybody's waiting to see how it's going to work. The government's actually spent a lot of time trying to keep people out of the family courts, trying to keep get the uh, people to solve their difficulties before resorting to the court and uh, to do that they've actually given a bit more in the way of infrastructure and resources for example they have um, I've got it here somewhere I've got it here oh I found it look uh, uh, they've got family dispute resolution mechanisms where people can go there they've got uh, Pair, uh, help for, uh, these brochures things like help for you know, so no brochures don't really sound good but there are they, they explain how it works and yes it's all on the internet uh, I've given people the links and I'd really think that's the most important thing in family law this year and so I'd ask everyone to go along have a look at the information on the internet about all the detailed changes in fact, uh, the changes came about because of pressure from various groups who felt that particular people were missing out on having the opportunity to be involved in parenting. What if someone's been a bad parent or been involved in violence or been abusing the children? Well, the law's trying to uh, deal with that as well. That's a factor that's taken into account because quite often, uh, once people have got the... Uh, relationship breakdown sorted they've then still got to deal with each other and the children and sometimes they really can't even stand each other you know that they don't like each other at all so yet they we the government's introduced uh, supervised changeover uh, services and visits so that they can come along and drop the child off there and the other party can pick the child up there, that way you don't have to go to each other's place and stress each other out. Uh, so that's probably a very practical thing. And the other thing is uh, before disputes actually get to court they've got to try 
pre-court dispute resolution procedures. So now whether that's going to work in the long term, I don't know. And they've also uh, changed the factors which the courts look at in uh, making particular uh, orders. So and that's all fairly technical. So that's about the children. In fact, that's about how both parents are involved with the children. The other thing which used to be a problem was uh, sometimes people wouldn't pay uh, child maintenance. So the government actually moved in with the Child Support Act, and that applies to all children, whether their parents are married or not. Yes, and it operates in conjunction with the tax office. So yes, child support cal payments are calculated. Yes, uh, what's that? This? Yes, they're based on the number of children, a certain percentage of income for the first child, and then it goes up with the next child, and so on. Here, yeah. so that's how, that's how child support uh, system works, and that's been another big change. A couple of other big changes, and uh, I've mentioned them in the lecture. One is there have been changes to property distribution. Originally, it was sort of the court had the discretion, and then there were a number of factors which the court had to take into account. Well, that's all changed, and so uh, because now people can actually enter into prenuptial agreements. It used to be the case that they couldn't, but now they can, uh, setting out how the property will be settled in the event of the marriage breaking up. And generally they're, feel, they're difficult to overturn, but if circumstances have changed significantly, that's right, if they've had a lot of ch a few children or something, over a lawyer, well, then that agreement can be set aside. So there is always a possibility there. The other thing we've changed is superannuation. Years ago, they were, courts weren't sure what to do with superannuation. Well, amendments to the Family Law Act have actually set out in detail the provisions for dealing with the split of superannuation. The other thing they've actually done is they've addressed the issue of family law matters and bankruptcy because sometimes at the time of a relationship or marriage breakdown, there were also bankruptcy proceedings going on and the creditors were chasing one of the partners for money owing and the other spouse was also seeking a property settlement. So uh, they've uh, given the family court jurisdiction to deal with bankruptcy matters uh, as well as the family law matters in that situation. Yes, there's a lot, isn't there? Yes, and it keeps changing. The legislation, that's right, it goes from... It's got letters and numbers. Well, the reason they do that, Robo Lawyer, is because if they kept on inserting new sections and having to renumber the sections all the time, that'd be very confusing because people know some of the legislation, some sections of the legislation, but if they want to add more, rather than renumber all the surrounding sections, what they do is they start adding letters, capital letters, like section 61, capital A, then 61, capital AB, and then 61, capital AC, and so on. So they're able to build it up. And if you have a look at part 7 of the Family Law Act, you'd probably see there are new changes there about the shared parenting responsibility. I think I've covered everything yes, last time. I forgot about the... Uh, child support, didn't I? And you want to remind me of it. Well, well perhaps this time we're right, yes. What? You, you, you've done your assignment. That's very good. Now, if you need an extension, you have to, there are forms which you require to fill in. But yes, everybody, please get your assignment in. Even if you've just got part A, get that in. Rather than say, I'll wait until I get part B in. Uh, get part A in because otherwise people sometimes forget to do it, don't they, Robo? Yes. That's very sad because they're able to get good marks. Mm. Okay, so I think that's about all for this week, yes. So, so we, hopefully it's all worked, yeah. Well, we'll see how it all goes, okay? Uh, yes, we've only got two more weeks to go, haven't we? Yes, yeah, so that's very... Okay, yes. Okay, yes, uh, 
yes, people should start looking at the past exam papers for the last two years to get an idea. That's right, yeah. Yes, it doesn't matter whether you use the footnote system or the harbour system in your assignment, no. It's a good idea to put references in, isn't it? Yes, yeah, and that uh, shows that you have looked something up and not just made it up or copied it out from somewhere. Mm -hmm. Okay, we, we'll say goodbye, shall we, Robert Lloyd? Till next week, yes, that bow tie looks very nice. Goodbye.